All right. Hey, Grant, how you doing? I'm doing good. Before we start, first off, I want to say sorry. Um, my uncle had passed away yesterday, so uh, I was dealing with a lot of phone calls coming in and now the probably for about like a whole hour, hour and a half. So I was unable to make the, the meeting yesterday. Um, personally, I want to say that's sorry on my part, but um, also hope you guys understand because that was not in my control. <laughs> I don't think you ever need to apologize. Uh, we appreciate the apology, but you definitely don't need to apologize for, for putting family first. So um, condolences to uh, you for your uncle and um, we, we appreciate you do taking the time today with us. Indeed, boss. So, well, Grant, I, I don't really have a, a structure for today. I just wanted to chat. Um, you know, I, I know I've known you and you turned me down many times for that full D3 scholarship I kept offering you, but uh, to go to Florida. Um, but uh, I'm glad that through it all, we've remained friends and been able to uh, see you. So, um, yeah, just uh, tell us a little bit about you and, and what makes Grant Grant. What do you, uh, what do you enjoy about track? Um, really, I mean, track and field was, uh, was always my first love. Um, this was something that I, I fell in love with at a young age. Um, it was really, it was just something to just keep me on the track. I mean, keep me out of trouble really, you know? So I, I played, I played all sports coming out of high school. I mean, coming out like growing up basketball, soccer, lacrosse, football, track were the main two I stuck with when I got to high school. And then, um, when I got to the next level, the collegiate level, I kind of just figured out, like, all right, I said I wanted to be uh, one of the best hurdlers. And at that point, I figured that I had to give up either uh, – I had to give up one of the two to uh, fulfill my dream. So whether that was, you know, on the football side or track side. So it was just something that um, I really just enjoyed doing. This track and field is uh, my love. It's my first love, and um, I will always enjoy it. You got recruited for football as well, definitely. Um what, uh, you know, I know you just said uh, track's your first love, but kind of what gave you the uh, desire to go all in on track? Um, it, it's an individual. Um, it's an individual sport, honestly. Um, I've never really been the best team player. I'm very selfish when it comes to that aspect. Um, I think that's a positive and a negative, but um, I really do enjoy just the, you know, the work that I put in to work on my craft. And, like, it doesn't really relate towards anybody else. It's just – me, myself, and the clock at the end of the day. What are some of those, what are the, some of the positives? I mean, it's self, you just said selfish. A lot of times people just have that negative connotation, but what, what are some of the thing, other things that it gives you benefit positive wise? Um, positive, I mean, honestly, it's, I think it's like self rewarding. So like, you know, if you put in work, you know, with me, I did so many events, but always, I think everybody knows that my first love was, was hurdles. So even after practice, I'll always find ways to, you know, work on my craft. And that's what it is. Like, you know, it's just how it is to be selfish. Working on your craft, figuring out exactly what you need to do to be successful. So, like, I know growing not really growing up, but, like, once I got to the uh, the collegiate stage, and especially, like, last year, prime example, um, I was watching a lot more film. I was uh, going to bed a lot later. I mean, like, just – I was taking this as my job versus, you know, just another avenue in sports. Like, I was ready and fully prepared. I mean, it's been a couple of times where everybody on the team would go out, drink. You know, you got your – you got people who want to smoke. You got people who want to do whatever. But um, usually, like, with me, it's like I was never really appealed to any of that stuff. You know, I was always working on my craft uh, Monday through Sunday, 24-7. I mean, like, I could be walking in the mall, and I'm over here acting like I'm hurdling. It's just, it's the small things like that, you know, that I always enjoy doing. I think my, my first memory of you was uh, the Boo Williams indoor, um, the high jump. And uh, I think as a freshman, um, you know, I, I'm not going to recall the exact number, but I want to say indoor, you were jumping like six, eight or something as a freshman. Um, but uh you you talked about that multifaceted you know the, the talents you had all over the place and um I remember maybe it was your senior year you popped off a 25 foot long jump uh you know in between your other primary events so uh decathlon was a word that was tossed out a lot um you know with your name so what um again what what then narrowed your focus because you you could have been good at a lot of things um you could have been a great decathlete but what made you choose kind of specializing in the hurdles? Um, I think it still just goes back to that was my first love, man. Like, 
I I always enjoyed how how Christian Coleman may see the hundred, and you know you got Wallace Spearman who may see the two hundred, Lashawn Mayer might see the four hundred. The the one ten hurdles is that sexy event to me. Like I I just that's just something I always enjoyed. It's just something that I, I was naturally good at um, growing up. And, you know, I did the I did the 80 meter hurdles. I did the 100 meter hurdles. And then I, I gradually got, you know, towards the 110s. And now I'm a, I'm a world champion and, and the face for, for, for hurling now. And it, it came so quick. It came to a full circle. But then, like, at the same time, it's it just like that and a snap of a finger. You can lose it all. So, like, my goal right now is – all right, now we have the corona year. Like, that's, this is exactly what I call I call it the corona year. So now we're in a corona year, and now we're figuring out, all right, what can we do to get better? All right, so we have – we got X, Y, and Z. So let's say we got Bob, Billy, and Rachel. And everybody is – everybody's doing what they have to do. But if I'm over here putting in the same work that I was going to do, rather if I had to meet uh, – like, rather if I had this 2020 year or not, if I continue on my timeline – I, it'll only be a matter of time until, you know, the records start falling. So that's all I'm trying to do. I'm just trying to keep myself motivated, keep myself healthy. So as the time goes on and everything starts building up back again, I don't really have to be like, okay, it's time for me to lock in. Like, it's time for me to, you know, start getting ready. Like, I already have six months, seven months under my belt. And, like, when the when August comes just for regular base training, I'm going to be super duper in shape. So now it's just, like, figuring out ways, okay, how can I get better over top of her? How can I get faster? How can I stay healthy? It's just, you, you think of the simple things. So now I'm just going to grind it all out now. All right. So you're a world champion and uh, I know you've mentioned to me and probably not, you know, uh, short on telling others as well that gold medal is, uh, you know, at the Olympics is, is the next big thing for you. Will let's take a, let's take the result of Olympics out of it. Yeah. Will being a world champion be as meaningful as just becoming an Olympian? Not counting, not counting getting that gold at the Olympics, but just the fact of becoming an Olympian. How how meaningful will that in itself be? Um, I would think twenty. I, I think each year will have a special meaning to me. Um, I can't really answer that question in whole, just because I know each year is going to have different blessings. So, like, with me, with this 2019 season, I knew I was the best before I even got two world champs. I mean, at NCAAs, I put that title on my – like, I, I, put the, I put the huge era of target on my back saying, come get me. It was just up to me to get to that point to, you know, to, to be there to prove myself. I mean, like, even when we were at NCAAs, I don't know if many people recall, but they had a Diamond League event in Rome. They had the once and hurdles. So it was Sergey Shabankov, Orlando Ortega. It was, you know, the name pe- the main people who I would have to face. I had just ran 1298 that day before, and then they ran like 1325, 1330. It was just like I it, it was just a sign of like, wow, I can't wait to get out there with them, you know? So like honestly, like each year I feel like it's gonna be a, a, a special meeting. I mean, 2019, I don't think anybody in the collegiate collegiate uh collegiate sport of track and field can top that just because it was from indoor to outdoor to world champs to a bowman winner like i don't think and it's just it's just one of those things like it's unprecedented you don't really hear about it too much but then like i think 2020 if you take your blessings you can probably even top it better it might not be the same results but you know you might go through some trials and tribulations that make you you know a better person that you are absolutely so I got, I got two more questions for you and I want other people to, um, you know, jump in and be able to ask you some questions too. Um, you kind of just alluded to it. Each year is going to have its own meaning. Um, but you've had age group championships. You've had a lot of state titles. You've had, um, you know, uh, I believe there was like a junior uh, world four by four that you did um, with a couple future Florida teammates. Um, you know, is there one particular memory that stands out more than the other along your whole journey? Um, definitely when I forgot, I, I didn't forget how to hurdle, but definitely when I was at my lowest of lows. Um, so I had just came off. All right, so we did NCAAs. We did 1298. And then we went to Budapest for my first meet overseas. We did 1316. So like, I'm still in that consistent range. 
So my next meet was USA's. I had to qualify to go to Doha. And it was, uh, I, I, I think I just hit that mental and physical fatigue block. Like just my body just didn't want to go no more. You know, I was going from July all the way to, I think it's January, February, March, April, May, June, July. I don't know if it was July. It was the end of July. It was the end of July. So I had basically just been training for a whole year. And my body just kind of just, just like how you power off the computer, it just powered off. So the first round, I did like 13-5, got yelled at. Second round, <laughs> I lost like to people who I should never, ever lose to. Went like 13-4. And then in the finals, I went like 13-2. Like it was just, it, it was not Grant Holloway times. Like I should have been out there easy, breezy, just coasting, coasting, coasting. And then when I got to the final turn up a little bit, make the team, go home, shower, end of the day. But for me, I'm over here grinning my teeth, pissed off. Like, it's just, just I wasn't in my mojo. So, I mean, definitely, Five I think about the low. Say that again, boss? Survive in advance. Yeah, it's the name of the game. So, I wasn't in my mojo, but it was just funny because the next, after that, after all that, I went to Paris, and I got, like, six. I think I ran, like, 13.25, 13.23 against all the people I saw at Rome where I was like, man, I can't wait to race them because I know it's going to be – I know I'm better than them. But I, I just – like I had a hurdle and like usually at the NCAAs, I will admit I had, I had to get a new phone number because just the amount of text messages come in, the congratulations, just everything. But now like when after Paris, like literally when I tell you my phone was just like, wait, like when I wake up in the morning, there's a couple text messages, it was just that. So it was kind of like, okay, so who's really on my side? So like literally what me and my friends say is like, who are those, uh, the main 100 supporters that will all, like, no matter when, lose, or draw, they're going to be there for you, shake your hand, rub your head, and everything. But, like, literally, I think about those times a little bit more because, like, now it gave me real, like, a, a, a clear cut clarity on who's really there for me and, like, who's just there when my name's in the newspaper or my name's all over Instagram, Twitter, Snapchat. So, I really think about the li- I think about the lows a little bit more than the highs, just because it was a reality check with you know with family and friends and everything going on in my life. Awesome. Um, so my last question. So anybody else who has things they want to um, bring up, you know, get those ready. My last question for you is uh, uh, totally switching gears here. Um, you came from Hampton Roads area, um, which is arguably one of the most talent rich hot spots in America. Um, you know, not just in, uh, not just in track and field, but in, in all sports. I mean, you've got everyone from, you know, Michael Vick and Allen Iverson, um, you know, at NBA and NFL, you've got Mike Tomlin, um, the coach, um, you got Francina McCrory, um, that came out of that area. White um, brothers. Yeah, and 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 go and go and go like it, it, the list goes on who was your favorite Hampton Roads athlete that you looked up to um growing up um honestly before I didn't I mean I knew of those people but I didn't really know of them until I started growing up so really the main person I look for I mean I looked up to was my brother Trey Holloway um of course I'm I'm kind of surpassed him now and 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 the I'm kind of you know, I'm in a more of elite program than he is, but man, I tell you, when I was growing up, I wanted to be just like Trey. I mean, Trey had got hit by a car at, at a young age. The doctor told him he wouldn't be able to walk no more. And then, um, you know, what the things that Trey did, you know, in the high school level, uh, in, the, in the high school era, I was just like, dang, man, like, I, God really had his way with him. Like, from someone who said, okay, you won't be able to walk to, okay, I'm going to hurdle again. Okay, I'm going to sprint again. Okay, let's just make it better. I'm going to be a state champion again. It was just one of those things. It's just like, wow, like, I want to be like him. Um, it was, it, it was, once I got past Trey, it was, it was hard to, it was kind of hard to find someone else to, you know, find a role model. But then that's when I started reaching out to people like Jason Richardson, Aries Merritt, David Oliver. Um, Jeff Porter, you know, all the mainstream hurdlers that the USA had in 2011, 12, 13, 14, and 15, before I came on a scene in 16 and 17, it was really more so like, okay, what can I do to get on that? What can I do to get plastered over Team USA? Okay, how can I be the next Aries Merritt or David Oliver or Jason Richardson? 
it was just finding ways to keep myself motivated. So like once, once I passed Trey, it was finding more so, okay, how can I be like Aries Merritt? Okay. Now that I passed Aries Merritt in a collegiate level, how can I be like Aries Merritt on the pro level? Cause he has the world record. So, I mean, that's who I model myself as now. I mean, I still watch so much film on Aries Merritt. It's it's ridiculous. Like you'll think I have like a, an addiction towards him. Like I just <laughs> I look, go on YouTube. I take those videos. I, I cropped it out. I move it to my phone. And now I have the little huddle app on my phone. I'm just watching. I'm just finding <laughs> ways just to you know keep myself motivated and always be a student of the game because you hear it all the time. I mean, if you're watching the Last Dance series with Michael Jordan now on ESPN on Sundays, he says it all the time. He's like, I was I was not um what's the word i wasn't i wasn't appealed to going out being around people um being the life of the party he was like i was always i was always wanting to play basketball uh ham if my hamstrings were sore i still wanted to shoot around and, you know if, if i was if i couldn't do that i wanted to watch it like so i'm always just finding ways to be a student of the game and figuring out what works best for me that's great. Anybody, uh, anybody want to jump in with some questions for, for Grant? I don't bite. <laughs> um, I can go. Uh, hi, I, I'm Benji. Um, What's up, Benji? Uh, I'm, I'm a fellow hurdler, nowhere near as good as you. Um, but, uh, I, and I was just kind of curious, um, you, you, I have watched some videos uh, about you and you've been talked about how, right before you start a race um, and like the day, the day of and before you, you're all about focusing into and in, into the race and that, and I guess that's something I have trouble with sometimes. And I was just wondering how you stay so laser focused um, in your race. Yeah. So really it, it, it differs just from, you know, if you know, I, I did so many events in college. So one day I had to do long, like literally the, the most rigorous schedule I did was, Long jump, it was hurdle prelims, long jump, hurdle finals, four by one. No, 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 I'm lying to you. It was four by, it was hurdle prelims, four by one, hurdle finals, four by four. Yeah, that was just those four events. So, like, each time I have different shoes for different events, but I, and I made myself do this. So, like, every time I take off my shoes, when I'm, when I'm barefoot, when I'm just in my socks, that's my time, tell jokes, relax, you know, play around, be, be, be the 18 year old, 19 year old, 20 year old that I am. But once I pick back on my other spikes for my next warm up, that's when I got locked back in, you know, everything else around me is obsolete. My family, I hate to say it is obsolete. Uh, girlfriend, drama at home, homework, essays, everything's obsolete for the next, let's say 30 minutes until I get on the line, I hear the gun and I finish. So every time I check off my shoes, it's just a different mindset to refocus, reframe, and figure out, okay, what are we about to do next? And as you get, uh, now I'm doing one event. So literally when I, like Doha, for example, I had, I had to get on the bus. We had to travel about 45 minutes to the venue. So that whole 45 minutes, I'm, I'm just being me. I'm talking, trying to stay light on my feet, relaxing, just talking, having fun. And then when I get to the facility, usually you get there about, you know, let's just say 45 minutes before you got to warm up. That's when I start locking it. You know, I put my headphones in, I got a nice little hat on and I just, you know, I'm listening to music. I'm on my phone, you know, just, I'm just trying to block out things, especially negative thoughts. And um, that's really how I lock in. It's just, I think about it about an hour out. And then if I have to switch my shoes, I mean, if I have to switch my spikes, that's when I figure out, it's like, okay, this is what we got to do now. Let's start, let's start thinking about it. Let's start, let's start figuring out. Because visualization plays a huge role, especially in the track and field. I mean, in almost all sports, but I really say it plays a huge role in track and field just because you do your event over and over and over and over and over again so many times that, like, it should be muscle memory now. But, like, when you visualize that perfect race or that, that, that one rep in practice where you're like, dang, I felt really good, that's how you start to figure out, okay, these are the things that I need to do to stay focused or these are the things that I need to do to help out with my body to put my mind at ease. Thanks. Always boss. Uh, I have a question. 
Uh, hi, I'm Lauren. I'm a high jumper and I started running the 400 this year. Um, and I was wondering if like what a typical day of nutrition looks like for you and if it differs like from when you're training for uh like a, a big upcoming race or if you're kind of more on an off season um it doesn't my usually i've kind of changed my diet um when i was first in high school i was eating whatever i wanted and it's just because it's high school you don't really see too much of the of the negative in it it's like okay i'm gonna burn off at practice or i'm gonna do this i'm gonna do that but then I came to the point where once I got to college, I kind of switched over like my whole, everything I do just switched. So like I cut out soda, I cut out candy. Only time I really eat candy if it's like on the weekends or like after a huge workout. I don't really eat too much fried food. If I do eat fried food, it's from an air fryer. So it's like, it's not really in grease. I don't, I don't really know how to explain an air fryer, but the air fryer helps out tremendously. And then, um, I don't do soda, I do water, I do fruit juice. And then like, it's just, you know, you just, I don't, I didn't make like a dr dramatic change saying like I need to eat kale or smoothies and all that, but like, it's just the simple stuff. So I switched over from white bread to wheat bread. Um, when I eat a sandwich, I still have a bag of chips. Uh, I do fruit, like, it's just, I don't, I don't go too deep into it. I kind of just stay, um, just, you know, I'd be mindful of what I'm eating. So, like, if I'm going out with some of the guys, uh, at, like, late night, I won't try to snack. I'll just try to, you know, just be there and, you know, relax. I'll have a water bottle with me. Um, I, it, it, it differs for each athlete because I know some people who don't eat, literally won't eat food 24 hours before they run. It's weird to me, but I love food. I can't go that long without it. But, um... I just kind of just, you know, I, I think about all the positives and, and what they want. So, like, with white, it don't get – it doesn't fill you up as fast as wheat. So, I go to wheat. Instead of doing – um, instead of just having a plain sandwich, I'll add lettuce, tomato. Um, I, I'll add all the other stuff to help fuel the body. But uh, main, mainly with, with everything else, I don't try to do too much. Um, I think when people overthink it, that's when they get in trouble. That's really helpful. Thank you. Always. <clears throat> uh, I got one. Uh, my name is Isam. I run the uh, the one and the two. Um, I kind of jumped on this call like a few minutes late, so if you already answered this, sorry. But uh, no worries, boss. What kind of made you like, like what were the deciding factors in you uh, choosing Florida? I was just wondering. Yeah. Um. So it, it's a funny story, only because when I first I wanted to do both. Uh, and Florida was my dream school. I always wanted to go to Florida. I always just figure it out. I was like, I want to be a Florida Gator. That's just what I wanted to do, how I wanted to do it. But as I kept playing football, I kept reaching out to the coaches. I kept telling Coach Holloway to reach out to the football coaches. And then I get the call. So they call me up. I'm like, yo, blah, blah, blah. We're talking. Long story short, quote, unquote, they say, we think it'll be better if you just walk on because we don't think you're Florida material for football. So I'm like, what? That, that doesn't make no sense because I had or I had offers to Oregon. I had offers to Alabama, Ohio State, Clemson. So it's like it's just not it's not adding up in my head. So I was like, so I went to Coach Holloway. I called Coach Holloway right after the call. And I said, uh, Coach, the football team doesn't want me. So um, I think I'm just going to go to Georgia. George, I was going to go to Georgia to do both. So I committed there for like three weeks. And I was like, Man, and this is the time where Noah Lyles was still in college. I mean, high school. Josephus Lyles. Uh, we had Jamari Ward going there. He's he was a uh, he's an SEC champion at Missouri. We had all these people, and Ryan Clark was there. Ryan Clark was a nine nine guy coming out of high school. It was it was ridiculous. The, the class was packed. So one day we're I bet all. Coach in Holloway the took now. that great. Uh huh. I bet Coach Holloway took that phone call great. Oh yeah, he did. He did. He was he was pissed. So he was like, okay. He the, so we're talking, we're going, we're going, we're going. And I'm looking at everybody who I got to go. I'm on my official visit at Florida. I'm looking at everybody. I'm like, I won't be able to beat all these guys even if I mutate my body into three other bodies. It still just won't work. It's just there. I have too much talent. So I go up to Coach Holloway, and I'm like, look, I, I want to be at Florida, but I want to do both. So then Coach Holloway full on convinced me. He was like, look, if they don't want you, that's their loss, like, I can see you scoring as many touchdowns as you want. I see you being the next Percy Harvin. Percy Harvin was the person, was another athlete who came out of my hometown, I think about eight years before me. 
And so Coach Hall basically said, like, if they don't want you, forget about them. I will make you – this is this is kind of what made me commit. Like, I decommitted from Georgia, like, a couple weeks later after Coach Hall told me this. He said, I will make you the next best hurdler, but on top of that, I'll make you an even better man you are today. And I was like, oh, that's, that's, a deep, that's a deep comment. So – that that weighed heavy on my mind, but um, Florida was just something that I always looked forward to, something I always wanted to do, and um, it was really it was really bad when um when when they said they didn't want me to play football because I kind of mm-hmm. just went in a shell and I kind of figured like oh I'm not good enough or I'm not good enough to do this or do that, but then at the same time it was a blessing in disguise because now I'm not even playing football no more. I'm just right. running over running over hurdles and jumping in dirt for a living. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Always, boss. What went into the decision to go to college versus pro? Because um, you had a, a fellow commit um, from Virginia decide yeah, to just so go pro. With all that going on, when Noah went pro, that's when everybody started scrambling. So Noah and Josephus went pro. And then um, nobody really knows this, but uh, my, my dad and my mom actually went after an agent trying to figure out if it was okay, if I should have went pro with them. So um, long story short, of course, you guys know I stayed, but um, it was a thought for for about two or two or three weeks. Nobody really knows that. I was already on campus at the time when we want when they wanted to pull me out of college just so I could um, I was going to move down to Claremont with them. We're all going to get a house together. We're all just going to live together, train together. But um, I decided just to stay just because I wanted that college experience. I mean, it's not every day that you know, you get someone who can go to college and and have fun and do do what teenagers do. You know, I had a, I had a chance to grow up away from my parents. I had a chance to, you know, find out who I was as an individual. And um, it was uh, it was tough, but because those were my good friends. Those were the people that I looked forward to talking to, hanging out with when I got to um, college. But you know. That's why I'm a social person. I'm a social butterfly. So I was able to make friends, and um, I was able to hold up a couple couple of trophies in the infield without them. What are some of the things you like to do when you check out from track? Besides, I, I know gaming is big for you. Yeah, so <laughs> I got my gaming set up literally right here. <laughs> <laughs> I got the whole set up. So um, I, that's usually what I do. I kind of um, I kind of game a lot. That's really my um, – other than watching film – if I'm not watching film. Sometimes I'm, I've I've been playing the game a lot. Um, I um, I got into poker like right after I turned pro. So I've been playing like a little poker app, especially with this time with the coronavirus. I've been just hanging in there. Um, but usually I I play the game. Like my 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 usually my my normal day is I wake up around eight thirty, go see the doctors, go to practice, go to weights. After I finish weights, it's around three thirty with everything done come home, shower, watch a little film from that practice, and then um, watch a little film from that practice, and then, you know, that's usually my day. Play a little, play the game a little bit at night, and then afterwards um, I'll figure out, you know, what, what, what I'm going to do for dinner and everything like that. But um, my outlet is definitely um, the game. Um, that's, that's the only way that gets me away from track and field because I can't be in track and field for – 24 7 365 i gotta have some hours away from it out of curiosity what games do you play um right now i'm on um black ops 4 i've been doing a league play on that i've been trying to play competitively with that and um i was playing competitively with uh modern warfare but i gave it up because i i it's, it's a lot of stuff that that needs to be fixed in that game i agree Ella, I think you should ask the potato question. Hi, um, I'm Etta, and this is Jen. Hello. <laughs> um, uh, what is your favorite way to eat potatoes, and why? Is this like a trick question? Like, do I need to say it like um, <laughs> in, in, in like another form, or like do I need to like literally say like potato chips or like French fries or, or something like that? Um, it's up to your interpretation. It's not a trick question. Just, you know. How do I like to eat potatoes? Yeah. Uh, I think I like to, I would say French fries throughout the air fryer. Um, that's really the, the only way, or other than potato chips, but, um, that's really, 
the only way two ways or oh, or mashed potatoes. Those are those are pretty. Oh, good. I love mashed potatoes. But uh, okay, I feel like I answered the question right then. I feel like those <laughs> are like great ways to uh to really eat potatoes. Yeah. <laughs> Thank <Thanks>. you. <laughs> Coach Holloway is known for his uh, um, loving motivation. Um, <laughs> loving being, that, being in quotation? <laughs> okay. tough, tough loving. We forgot the word tough. Um, what is it about him that, you know, that resonates with you? What, is, you know, what, are, what are some of those ways that he you know, really, really digs at you, but it motivates you the right way? Um, so, like, every day I practice after I lost, after I took my first loss in 2019, he put a. He always brought a picture out of Daniel Roberts, and um, it was it was it was irritating at first. But like, the thing is with him is like, if you beat him, if you get used to seeing him every day, and you, you get used to you beating him at practice, when you get to the meet, it's gonna feel like nothing. So I always he always just found ways to motivate me, especially when I was in that drought when I just wasn't running fast. Um, it was a yada, It was a lot of yelling at each other. It was a lot of motivating. A lot of watching film with him after, before practice, you know, just finding out ways to get better, you know. But that's the, that's the, that's what I like about Coach Coach Holloway is um he always finds ways to motivate me, you know, rather if it's on the track, off the track. Um, it's just he, he'll look for ways to bring the best out in you. And the, the analogy that I always use is me and Coach Holloway are both – we're both – we both want to get the last word in some time. So I, the analogy I say is he's a silverback gorilla. I'm a silverback gorilla. If we, if you put us both in the room, we're going to, we're going to fight. We're going to push. We're going to shove. But at the end of the day, we both want to be able to take our shirts off and beat our chest. But at the end of the day, he was the silverback that was born in 1980. And I was a silverback that was born in 2000 or not 2000. I was a silverback that was born in 1997. So, He's always going to win because he's just a little bit wiser than me. I think you're being generous at how young you think he is. But. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, any, any final questions for Grant? I have one. Um, as, like a, as like a highlight and a low light, what was like – what was one of your favorite moments, like a really amazing high, like in your career? And also what was one of the hardest things that you've had to overcome in your career? Um, I'll start with the low. Um, definitely, like I said, when I just forgot, I just, I hit that mental block for, for two months and like, not really family, but I would say like people that I thought were close friends to me, they kind of didn't text me. Um, people that, you know, I, when when I lost at USA, you know, you got you got critics and fans and everybody wants to voice their opinion. So a lot of people were just kind of like shitting on me at the time saying like, oh, he was just a fluke. Da, 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 da. He won't be able to capitalize it up. And, you know, that was definitely a low because I'm not used to that. You know, I'm used to either people doubting me and I'll prove them wrong or like I'm not really used to people saying like, OK, Grant's going to not not finish out the season strong because he used it all at this point, or he's only an indoor runner, or he's only this, or he's only that. Um, I'm not really used to that because a lot of people do, don't just see me through the track lens. They see me as a personal, uh, social person who can hang out, talk to, it doesn't matter uh, the, 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 the race or the religion, white, white or black. It, he knows at the end of the day that he's going to spread love. He knows he's going to smile. You know he's going to make other people smile. And then on top of that, he's probably going to say something crazy to make himself smile. <laughs> so like, I always find ways like that. But then like, you know, when people are constantly put a negative connotation on you, you always feel like, dang, like I'm not going to be able to make it out. But um, that was definitely a low, you know, when people just, I, people I thought who were on my side, they didn't come to my side. And um, definitely a high was um, when I was on the podium at, at in, in Doha for world championships and Everybody knows who our president is, and we're not even gonna get into all that. But when I was on this, when I was on the stage, I, I had saluted to my dad because he served 22 years in the military. So I was just, you know, I was giving giving thanks back to him. I was paying homage back to him, and um, you know, regardless of what's going on in the United States, 
that moment right there will always sit with me because one, that was my first world title. I hope to win a lot more, but that was my first one. I was 21 years old and I wasn't expected to win. So those, those, those three things with that medal will always, I will always remember that. That's awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Well, Grant, thank you so, so much for your time. We really appreciate it. Um, I know you've, made uh, uh made us even bigger fans of you as a person and not just you as a hurdler so uh, we appreciate it um you know thank you so much and and god bless as you uh uh chase chase the next step in your dream you're the best thank you so much i hope i didn't talk you guys head off too much um if you ever want to ask a question i don't bite i've been doing this thing recently since i got this coronavirus like i'll just go through like the requested session so if you have any questions that you didn't want to ask because all your teammates were here and you didn't want to feel like embarrassed because it was a stupid question, I get that. I've been there in their shoes before. Just send me a message. Most likely I'll check it within the next hour or so. I'm about to go find me something to eat, actually. And um, we'll, we, we'll chat. Um, just, just let me know, and um, we'll figure some stuff out. Best way for them to reach you, which, uh, which medium? Um, Instagram, I don't think. I don't, let me see. If Twitter. I don't think Twitter does it. Or does it do that? I think I think they all fall in on oh, Instagram or Twitter. I think they all fall in one section. I hope. I don't know. Yeah, either one will work. Either one will work. All right. Well, thanks, Grant. And, uh, you know, have a good dinner. And, and uh, we look forward to watching you next time we're able to compete. Awesome. Thank you, guys. You guys be safe.